I hope you all are doing great today and thank you for tuning in. Today I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, we're gonna be talking about drum breaks. When we're sampling drum breaks, how do I go about and break it apart and manipulate our drum breaks? There's so many ways you can go about it, but this is just a technique that I've been using. If you guys know from some of my beats that I make, I love using live drum samples. Something about live drum samples that just sound good. They feel good through the speakers. So here's some ways that I go about sampling live drum shots. And I'm using the MPC-1, but this will apply to any machine you're using. Hopefully you guys pick up a thing or two from this video. All right, so we're right here in the MPC-1. I'll just go ahead and hit play. I was working on this beat and this is just a two bar loop that I already chopped up. <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much it right there. It's just looping. One thing I am going to mention is when I'm listening to drum breaks, live drum breaks, depending on the song you're doing, if you guys are going to want to slice up this live drum break, as I'm hearing the, the kick, the snare, the cymbals, I don't like too many cymbals to be going on because what I'm going to do with this drum break, I'm going to slice it up into 16 notes and I'm going to try to get each shot separate on each pad. So if there's cymbals going everywhere, uh, this is probably gonna be a little harder <laughs> to break apart. So, so let's go ahead and record that. And this time I'm not gonna go on slice mode. I'm just gonna sample straight into the MPC one. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's cool. I'm gonna just get that right there. All right, so we're right here in our drum break and I want just two bars. Uh, I don't. I, I sampled more than two bars, but I only want two bars, but I noticed that towards the ending over here, I have a drum roll that I want and I don't have that in the first two bars over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard or the first two bars uh, because they don't have the shots that I want. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start somewhere over here in the middle. So I'm gonna use these and see where I'm gonna start. Right there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna count and I'm gonna count uh, two bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, boom. It's gonna end right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go right here and I'm gonna show you guys something really cool real, real quick. Uh, these pads, these have different functions. And what I use the most is the start, the, the first bottom left pad, which is just plays your loop. And then this bottom right pad, this will play everything after that that's gonna be cut off. So as you guys can see, Right there. That's where the, the third bar starts, which I don't want. About right there. And now let's go for the, the beginning. Right there. Now, uh, this top left pad will loop. As you're holding that down, it's going to loop the start and end point and it's going to keep looping. One, two, three. There you go. That's cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and process this. I'm going to discard. So now it just threw away everything on the left and right and left me with the selection that I made. Now that we have a two bar drum loop, I'm going to go to from trim. I'm going to go to chop and on chop. Yes, you guys can go manually and do all that. But if I have a perfect two bar drum loop, I'm going to just go to my my regions and I'm going to leave that at 16. If it's a two bar drum loop and then I have my regions at 16, it should give me, it should slice everything up perfectly. So now we have that sliced everything up for me. You know what I want that I don't have right here is a snare that's just the snare. I don't want a snare and the roll. So I'm gonna look for one of these shots that will give me just a snare hit. Like right here is giving me the snare and the kick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this pad only and I'm gonna take out that kick. There you go. 
same, uh, this one I'll leave it. I'll take out that kick. I'll take out that kick. The reason why I'm doing this is because these are snares, but they will have a different tone to them. So it's not the same exact snare. I want different uh, sounding snares. This one, I'll keep the kick right there just so I can use it here and there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make this into its own program. Convert, and let's hit do it. Let's go to our main menu. Let's go to track number two. Make sure you name your tracks. And now I'm gonna go to the program that we just created, which is right here. Cool, so we have everything right here. If you guys wanna go ahead and take this a step further, you guys could even go to your little home uh, uh, icon, go to pad colors. Go to fixed, we'll just go into fix and single pad. And I'm gonna color my snares red. And I'm gonna do my kicks purple. And my hi hats, let's do our hi hats uh, blue. We'll leave it like that. The reason why I'm doing this is because now I can see where my kicks are at, where my snares and my hi hats. Uh, one of these hi hats, I think it was this one. I like that roll, that snare roll. I wanna go back and edit that. I want the snare roll by itself. So let's go back to sample editor and let's try to get that uh, isolated, just the snare roll. So let's adjust the start point and let's get this. Now if we go back home, we should have that. And I'll go ahead and color that pad and I'll give it its own color. Let's make that blue. Cool, so now we have everything separate, we know what's what, and this is a live drum recording that we can play on the beat we're listening to and kind of make it unique. All right, so if some of you guys are not the best finger drummers like me, I'm not really good with finger drumming. I like to lay down my drums kind of piece by piece. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna lay my dr my downbeats. That I am going to actually quantize. I want that to be quantized. I want my downbeats to be on the grid. And my ghost notes, I'll do those unquantized. So right now I'm only gonna lay down the kick and then we'll go on with the snare. All right, cool. Now let's hear different snares. All right. I like this snare right here because it kind of has a hi-hat right after it, so it keeps the feeling going. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this snare. All right, so here's that snare roll. I'm gonna add that snare roll at the end of each bar. Actually, the snare roll, I'm not gonna quantize because I wanna catch that snare roll right before the downbeat of the next bar. If I wanna nudge that snare roll just a bit, just so I can catch it a little bit before, that's cool. I just select that and make sure I'm on don't snap and keep going. All right, so that's actually sounding really nice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add another kick. Now that I'm gonna add this uh, second kick, I'm gonna take it off of quantize. So make sure that's not on. So, you know, if it's red right here, TC, that's on quantize. If it's not on red, that's off quantize. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and add some, well, I guess they're not really ghost kicks, but they're just, different kicks on top of what we have with yeah. That's cool. So, you know, as since we have all these drum shots isolated, we can throw these in whenever we want and I don't know, just kind of create our own grooves instead of using a drum break that's been recorded already and it's, you know, just looping. Here's
here's this kick right here. Maybe this can be a kick that I'm gonna add, just kind of like a do doom, do doom. I'm gonna add that do doom. But uh, it just it has a, a hi hat in here, so I don't like that. So what we can do is we're gonna select this kick. I wanted to filter it out a little bit more so it doesn't stand out too much. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, as we select that kick, I'm gonna go to 16 levels, and on 16 levels, you have different options. You got velocity, tune, filter, layers, you know, there's a bunch of different ones that we have in here. But what we're gonna go to is filter. So this is really cool, we hit close. What this is gonna do is grab that kick, and it's gonna do different filters. So this is the original sound. I like this one. This is gonna be my my uh, my kick right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. There you go. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add that again right here. All right, cool. So as you guys can see, I'm just playing around with it. I'm listening to it. I hit loop. I'm working on a two bar loop right now. Don't worry about it. If it sounds too repetitive later on, we can manipulate it and change it even more. But right now I have a two bar live drum loop that I sliced up, made it my own and started coming up with my own groove. Uh, this sounds great. I like how it sounds. Now, the only thing now is since it's a drum, now, now, I keep saying now, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but since it's a live drum break, it's missing that low end that I would like to hear, which is okay. Now what we can do is here on track two is my live drum break. That's what we named it, and that's cool. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to another track. This is gonna be a track three. We're gonna name this DRM One Shots, 1S. So drum one shots. I hit do it, and we're gonna create a separate program. This is gonna be another program, and on this program, I'm actually gonna go to my SD card and browse for some kicks. I actually wanna hear or, or look for some, some subby or low-end punchy kicks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna layer some of these kicks on top of the live drum break just so we can add some punchiness or some low-end to that uh, drum break. So let's go ahead and listen to some of these samples that I have right here. And what I'm gonna do, what I like to do is, I'm gonna hit play, and as I hit play, I'm gonna listen to some of these one shots and, and see what feels good with the beats and the sample. I like that. I like that. I like that. So I don't know if you guys notice. I'm gonna explain something right now. Is the live drum break the kicks? You know they have a, a hi hat on top of the kick, so it's punchy. And there's like high frequencies in those samples. So what I'm listening for right here is more of a low end, uh, a muffled kick. I don't want a punchy kick. So as you guys can hear, this is a, a punchy kick. I don't wanna add that on top of my live drum break kick because they're both kind of punchy and just wouldn't make sense. I wanna, you know, that's a punchy kick. I wanna contrast my live drum kick with something subby and lo-fi or just muffled, kind of like these. So those sound good to me. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add those on the downbeat. So I'm gonna quantize this back and I, I want these to be lined up. I'm not gonna throw all the kicks in there, even the ghost notes, I'm not gonna do that. I'm only gonna lay these subby kicks, the one shots on top of, if we go back to our drum break, I'm only gonna lay that down on these, boom, 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 boom. And you, these were all the other ghost kicks that we had, but I'm not gonna use those. I'm only gonna lay those down on these kicks. So let's go back and let's see how this sounds. Cool, uh, I like this kick right here. We're gonna lay this one down. That sounds great. And if anything, it might sound a little too punchy. So I'm gonna go to program edit and I'm gonna go to this uh, envelope and this kick. 
yeah, it sounds a little too punchy for me. So let's put a low pass filter on this MPC one and let's filter it out. Actually, I'm going to hit play while I'm filtering it because it sounds, you know, you'll get a better representation of what you're doing. There you go. There you go. That sounds so much better. Now our live drum sample or a live drum break has some low end to it. It just punches through your speakers so much more uh, in, a, in a pleasing way versus not having this one shot layered on top. Uh, this is a very important part when you're layering drum shots, especially kicks. The reason why I separated my drum break program from my one shot programs on a separate track is because when we're importing these audio stems, separate audio stems into Ableton or whatever DAW you're using, make sure when you're in your DAW, you guys zoom in and you're checking your phase. I'm not gonna touch up the polarity and phasing within this video because that's a whole different video for in itself, but make sure your kick, your live kick and your one shot kick is in phase because sometimes when you're layering shots or, or snares or kicks, if they're out of phase, you're really gonna go into just sounding floppy or it's just not gonna sound right. Uh, if you guys do not understand phase and you're like, man, I don't know what phase is or how to check if I'm in phase or out of phase, don't even worry about it right now. Just make sure your kicks are sounding punchy. But if you're layering kicks and you're noticing that when you solo that one shot, it sounds punchy, but when you release the solo function and you hear it, it with everything, your live drum break, and it just sounds floppy, is probably because there's some phasing issues going on. So make sure you're looking into that and if you guys don't know what that means, look into it because it's very important, especially when we're layering drum shots. And as I'm mentioning Ableton and exporting beats and all that, make sure you guys are watching the other video that I've made already that I'm, I'm showing how I export my audio stems to go into Ableton. I'll leave that link somewhere up here. Make sure you guys check that video out if you have not seen it already. It might help you guys out as you're exporting your beats. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch y'all on our next video.